Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, another entry here based on your suggestions. Uh, this is probably going to be the last one that I do for this week, only because I'm going to be out for a few days after this on a trip. So as soon as I come back, I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest for you here. Thank you as always for your continued suggestions. Uh, please keep them coming. Um, this one in particular is a very interesting one, very fascinating one. Never heard of this part particular cryptid before but apparently it is a well-known entity or set of entities within Iceland and I'm talking about the cryptids known as the Holdu folk um, basically they are a very well-known through almost hundreds and hundreds of years uh, set of cryptids that even to this day people still wildly believe in them and I'll talk about them here in a minute with regards to who they are, um, what they do, some of the tales that people have said uh, that they that they with their encounters with these Holdu folk, they go by several different names as well. And for the sake of this particular uh, video, I'm going to go ahead and call them by one of their easier names to say. And in this case, they're known as the Hidden People. Um, I, I wanted to talk about this because it reminded me of some some of the stuff that I've talked about in the past. Just a couple of weeks back, for example, the Orang Bunian, which also had to do with a set of hidden people and then of course my one of my all-time favorites the genius Loki also another set of hidden spirits of sort and um, in this case they're the very same thing you have a group of entities that for whatever reason live parallel to humans but they are completely invisible to humans, at least in most situations so um, like those other ones the Rangbunian and genius Loki um, this one is a very close cousin to it. So who are the Holdu folk? Um, who are these hidden people? Well, as I mentioned earlier, they are a well-known tale or urban legend or anything involving cryptids or monsters within Iceland. We're talking about something involving hundreds and hundreds of years back. There have been tales written of these Holdu folk since at least, according to what I saw in here, um, since what, the 1300s? Somewhere around there, 1400s? Um, they have been around for a long, long time. They experienced a peak of sorts um, when we're looking at around the 17th, 16th, 18th century. And even to this day, there is a common belief from the people there in Iceland that, all right, we don't really believe in the Holy Folk, but let's go ahead and say that just in case, yes, we respect these hidden people, just in case. That seems to be the common mindset today when it comes to the people that live there in Iceland. It's notable to mention um, that this is a, a region, like Iceland is the only region that encounters these hidden people because there's no other places out there that are nearby or anywhere else in other parts of the world where people believe in these things, where they believe in this Hodu folk. And the, the part of the reasons for this tend to be that with its nomadic region, uh, Iceland is very isolated. So whether these uh, particular hidden people just decided to stay in Iceland only, or um, the only belief and the only people that believed in them are in Iceland itself, and due to the very remote nature of their location, they didn't really spread out this belief to anywhere else, it's up to you to decide. Now, who are the Holdu folk, these hidden people, exactly? Well, basically, they're us. I mean, they are you and me. They're humans. Um, and some people refer them as elves, but for all intents and purposes, they look exactly like humans. Um, there are various depictions of them being the size of a human, and then there are other depictions being of the size of a tiny elf. Uh, let's say, you know, something about maybe a foot tall, like the size of a small child or so forth. Um, so anything involving their depictions their size ranges but as far as their appearances they are 100 percent human and with regards to like how they look and how they interact um, they look just like us when it comes to their clothing um, they interact just like any other parts of societies they have their own cultures they have their own um, I guess celebrations, good times, bad times, they're basically another form of civilization but for the fact that they are 100% invisible to us and they live in the same areas that we do except curiously enough they live in areas that normally obviously would not house humans and what I mean is this uh, apparently they're very fond of living in 
giant boulders and giant rocks and giant mounds of grass, um, anything involving giant gardens. Um, they are apparently living in a dimension where to us, let's say it's a giant boulder, it's filled on the inside obviously with stone, but in their world, I guess in their perception or their dimension, they've actually made a home inside of it. So from our perspective, like let's say you're looking out uh, from our side of a mirror, all we see on the inside is just a giant stone. But if we were to jump into their world, that giant stone would probably be hollow, there would be a kitchen, there would be a, a living room, there would be a bedroom, um, everything along those lines um, as far as an actual home, except of course in their world, they actually live in it and uh, that that's apparently how they how they live as a civilization fascinating no the idea that um, when if you're in Iceland and if you're looking out let's say at a giant mound and it happens to be just filled with dirt filled with grass filled with whatever um, from our perspective it's inhabitable um, habitable nothing there lives but in their world in the Holofuk world they have entire blocks entire cities living in them um, as far as the characteristics of the Holdu folk um, they uh, love essentially dancing they love uh, being nice I guess to humans um, there are various beliefs about some of them doing very well doing very good things for humans as long as they are respected um, so much so that these are some of the things that the Icelandic people do and uh, essentially believe in whenever they're around areas that they believe house these particular hidden people um, there's the idea and the belief that um, anything involving giant mounds um, they are sacred they are tied to these elves in fact you'll see a picture of one here and it has to do um, with what, the, what is commonly believed being as a castle of these people and so whenever there's projects that are on board there in Iceland as far as having let's say a road built nearby or maybe some homes built nearby and they, the, some of the plans involve actually encroaching on the territory let's say of this castle um, which by the way has a name is called the Alpha Borg then whenever that occurs there are a group of Icelandic people there that will actually cancel and publicly demonstrate to stop the project I, I know it, it's fascinating um, the, again um, I mentioned earlier that uh, for most Islamic people today, their belief is we don't really believe in these things, but at the same time, we don't want to make them mad. And so, in that case, what they do is they just simply make sure that um, they're going to live in harmony with these hidden people, with these hidden elves. Um, there's highway construction plans that have been halted. There have been highways that have been diverted. Uh, maybe they weren't halted altogether, but at least their course was changed to ensure. There was instances as f uh, with regards to the U.S. having military bases. They were scrutinized by some of the locals because some of the locals thought where the U.S. was putting the military base, it was encroaching on some of these elves. In fact, in 1982, there was an actual demonstration of about 150 people from Iceland who were saying uh, that they were endangering the activities of their native elves. Um, so what did the Icelandic people do to actually try to appease these elves? The whole thing about these elves again is to respect them uh, as far as these hidden people. Acknowledge that they exist even if you can't see or hear them uh, and the best way to do it is to respect them. And so pretty much peppered across the region of Iceland you'll see this which are little tiny homes these homes are basically just built on the side of things I don't think there's anything inside them like um, somebody just took let's say uh, the front of a house like a wood panel of some sort decorated it painted it put windows on it and then just tucked it to the side of something like in this case the side of a grassy mound and then that's it and the main reason for this is because the people that did that believed that that's where these hidden people lived like in their version in their world in their dimension that's where they lived and so they wanted to create a special I guess entrance for them and you'll see another picture here of another similar thing in this case um, there's one that showcases uh, a house with three I guess separate entryways and then towards the right of it there's another home there again another grassy mound of sorts that people believed um, had to do with the existence of these hidden elves. Fascinating isn't it uh, how some people there in Iceland 
pretty much think to themselves that there's gonna that, that that that's where these people live and when they do so then they wanted to create and respect these hidden elves by doing these special projects these um, holder folk by the way also seem to enjoy this because they communicate in people in several ways and the people that um, are essentially being kind and respectful to them they in turn get I guess you could call it good luck given to them because in Iceland if people do these things to the holy folk and in return they get let's say a plentiful set of crops that year or they get good news in terms of whatever financial success or anything else that could be deemed something really really like good fortune like outstanding fortune far more than usual then those um, Icelandic people will acknowledge that as being the work of the holy folk Conversely, if someone goes ahead and let's say disrespects the holy folk and let's say some people are saying no, do not build that construction there because there's going to be uh, something as far as the holy folk, these hidden people, that's their domicile, but the construction is done nonetheless and then something befalls the area, like let's say the very same crops all of a sudden are wiltered and weathered, they're in poor condition, then that's when the people realize, oh no, they did something bad uh, because these holy folk are doing this damage to them. There has also been um, uh, ties to the holy folk causing like little mini rock slides, um, anything involving that kind of smaller disasters these are the same people that believe that this is all coming from these holy folk doing bad things to them also there are uh, four um, sets of holidays there in Iceland and they are also tied to these holy folk uh, for example in New Year's uh, this is one of the ones that I guess is one of the most recognized ones um, it is believed that the elves actually come down to the Icelanders to their locations directly I don't know why maybe to just maybe the one time of the year this is where the two sets of communities the regular folks us and then these hidden folk um, they come together and so people and Icelanders there leave candles all around I guess certain areas of their homes so that way you can ensure that these uh, that at the dead of night that these holy folk can help you know can find their way around they don't want the uh, holy folk to get lost or they don't want them to uh, find it hard to get to things because of darkness no they leave candles out because of it uh, another holiday uh, mentioned is the twelfth night there's another holiday mentioned the midsummer night and then there's also christmas night and on those things especially the twelfth night there's a bonfire that's made for these um, hidden people and that way the hidden people can enjoy i guess this particular party for them um, anything involving christmas there's the idea that the the holdu folk invade the farmhouses of these Icelandic uh, people, and in turn they hold their own wild parties. And so it, the idea is that it's it's good to be respectful during Christmas because who knows next to you is going to be one of these hidden people dancing away. And um, one, it, it's so much so that one belief there in Iceland is that you never throw a stone in midair. Like you never actually just grab a stone and throw it like like the common game to see how far you can chuck a stone you never do that because the belief is watch out you're gonna hit one of these hidden uh, folks one of these holy folks because you can't see them they can see you but you can see them and so it's best not to do it crazy huh I mean the ideas and, and everything so much it seems to be uh, linked to these particular entities whatever they are and what's fascinating to think is that even to this day, uh, th this is as common as ever. Now, as far as um, what these elves do and how they communicate with people, the people that are able to see um, these um, Hodu folk, apparently they are given this sight on purpose by the hidden people. You can only see the Hodu folk if they allow you to see them. And so those that have uh, been able to see these uh, particular entities it's, it's considered a great blessing uh, so much so that um, that they're considered a very very uh, rich resource um, and, and anybody who sees these holy folk means that you're gonna have very good luck um, one such person apparently was uh, some Icelandic farmer of some sort um, he was making plans in his farm to have a boulder moved from one place to another maybe he was trying to you know place more crops there who knows but 
right when he was planning on doing so and he had all his plans set that night he had a dream and in this dream one of these hidden folk appeared to him and it was actually a woman and she told him that she knew of his plans and she told him that actually in that boulder her and her family lived and so all she asked for was that um, she be given time because she was going to allow him to move that boulder but in turn she would be given time to please relocate her family someplace else and then that way they could settle someplace and then ensure that whenever this boulder is moved that they won't be affected in any other way and so this particular um, Icelandic farmer whoever he was he was so enthralled by this dream and the realness of it that he decided to stall that relocation of the boulder for a few days he delayed it um, some of the people there apparently maybe the ones who were hired to do all the work for him they were confused about this and they tried to make him change his mind but absolutely he would not do it he said it was the right thing to do as far as treating these um, hidden people with respect and so he did it. Uh, he stopped his construction he actually stopped it for a couple days and then that was it um, nothing else befell him um, otherwise the idea was if he did it with these um, with 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 knowing that these uh, particular hidden people whatever that family was was there and they and he ignored their plight then something bad could have happened to him so crazy crazy stuff has anyone else heard anything else involving these um, hidden people these Huldu folk uh, there's got to be lots and lots of tales uh, with regards to them probably the closest analysis um, that I saw and I'll just read it directly from um, this guy there was apparently a, a theologian and psychoanalyst um, his his name was Haukur Jonasson he was the one that probably chronicled some of the best things about these Huldu folk and this is what he said um, he said that many things indicate that these hidden people originate in our unconscious. They resemble us in many ways, though they are more spirit-like and invisible. And to see the elves must either be given permission by them or have a special ability. They can have uh, superhuman capabilities. They can be both better and worse than humans. To provoke their anger means trouble, but to help them in times of crisis means blessing. And as a result, they are powerful, respected, and feared. Uh, the hidden people have various human attributes, and even though they live longer than we do, they are born and they die just as we do. They eat and drink, they play instruments, have lights in their houses, go fishing, move residences, keep animals, though they are more productive than those of humans. Traditional belief holds that there are both good elves and bad elves, light elves and dark. Um, light elves live closer to the gods and are Christians. They worship in churches They can that can be identified in formation of rocks or in dome-like caves. The dark elves live in the ground. The hidden people live not only in hills and stones, but in the ocean and lakes as well, and even in the air. The elves do not live in burnt lava, for it is the dwelling of evil spirits and death. It is possible to learn magic um, from the hidden people. They can be very seductive, though if you don't do what they want, they turn against you. And if you do accept what they offer, you run the risk of becoming insane. Crazy, crazy stuff. No, um, uh, a very good explanation about this uh, from this guy about these Holden folks. So if if anyone has anything else that they want to add, um, it'll be fascinating to see what else um, other tales or the stories that people have encountered with these particular entities. So all right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care.